read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners Hey, welcome back to another week at Read Me Romance. This week we have a brand new audio book. I don't even know why I say that anymore. I just said we have an, a book. It's new. <laughs> um, it's S.A. Clayton. She wrote us a book called Tempting You that I'm super excited to let everybody listen to. Um, she's got some great stuff. We'll tell you about it in just a little bit, but first we're going to catch up. Um, so I wanted to mention right off the bat that uh, I have never watched the Grammys before. And I think I talked about it last week that the girls from that wrote the unofficial Bridgerton musical. Yes. Will Barlow and Emily Bear, they were up for a Grammy. And so um, I had never watched it before. And they were on a pre-show. Like they were before the Grammys went live. It was like two hours before they gave away some awards. And her, their, their group was like... Um, uh, I forget what it was. It's like composers or something like that mm -hmm. in orchestra composers or whatever. They were up against like Andrew Lloyd Webber who wrote like, you know, millions of musicals like cats and you know, okay. the, the Phantom of the Opera and all that. So um, I think that's right. If I'm not, I'm sorry, theater guys, but um, yeah. So they were up against him and like other like really famous composers and they fucking won. Did they really? Yes. I watched it and like I got so teary eyed when they won because like uh, Emily Bear is um, she's the one who's like uh, she's like a child prodigy. She's been playing piano since she was four years old. It was like she worked with Quincy Jones when she was like seven. Mm -hmm. So she did like a ton of jazz music. Anyways. So her mom was recording it and she was sitting next to her. And so Emily's face is just like, <gasps> like she just can't believe oh it. God. It's so sweet. And then her and Abigail's like across the aisle from her and they both like pop up and they look at each other. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so cute. And they go on stage and they're both so sweet. And they were like, Abigail said, I never thought when I asked TikTok, what if Bridgerton was a musical that I would be getting a Grammy? <laughs> she was like, Here we are. So that's was, insane. I know it was January 2021, so it's been a year since it all happened. It just goes to show you that you know sometimes things are pushed in our face, and we kind of like them, or they're pushed upon us, but. Mm -hmm true true talent always finds a way to bleed through yeah, yeah for sure and so um you know and the, it was so different and the the reason they're so revolutionary too in their field not only are they 20 and 21 or 21 and 22 now i think um young women but they showed their entire process on tiktok and instagram live they recorded every day. They would do live sessions of them writing these songs, producing them, composing them. They showed the entire process, which has really never been done before from start to finish. And they mm -hmm. did it so quickly. I think in a matter of two weeks, they had wow. written the entire album. So, and I watched all of their live videos because I would just put it on my phone and like <laughs> watch it while I was doing stuff on my computer. And it was just so interesting like the whole process of it was interesting. It was something I'd never, you know, knew anything about before. But not only that, to see these incredible young women that are so talented and creative sharing their knowledge and sharing their process and bringing people to the table to do this. Yeah. And one thing that Emily said when she got up, you know, to do the speech or whatever, her and Abigail, Emily said this award is for all the women that are producing, composing, editing. She was like the ones that she was like, you think they're not here. She was like, we exist. And she was like, this is for all of them. Don't give up. And it was just like, it was so like woman positive and so empowering. Yeah. It was just really beautiful to see it. So, and it's for the, it's for the Bridgerton. Like that's what's insane too, that this was, you know, it was just so crazy that this all happened. I mean, they got the rights to it and all that from Netflix and everything. They were able to do it. So it, yeah, it's just really awesome. So it was just super exciting to, to watch the whole process and to watch them win. And, you know, I had never seen something like that before. I can't wait to see what they do next. This is just, I know it's the start of a lot of good stuff for them. So, and Abigail Barley, she's got great pop music too. She writes a lot of fun stuff that I like. So that's something else. Um, 
There is also something that's going around on TikTok that I made a note about that um, a lot of people have a very strong stance on returning books. Have you seen this? I, I've seen, I don't, I don't go on TikTok. So, mm -hmm. okay. Because it's addictive to me and I'll it lose. It is. I will mm -hmm. lose. I've done it before and I actually get, I can't sleep because mm -hmm. it makes my mind go too fast for mm -hmm. some reason. I don't know. It's just not. I can see me. that. I'm actually curious if anybody else had that problem. Yeah. I've tried quitting it before and then I'm like, okay, that was silly. And I got back on, but I've cut it out completely because my brain just does not. It mm -hmm. wants to fiddle with it and yeah. then I can't sleep and it's just not good for me. But I've seen other people talk about it and I don't comment because, of course, I have my own opinions, which I yep. don't think others will agree with. Mm -hmm. So, but what is yours? <laughs> oh, do you want me to tell you mine? No, I mean, I'll tell you. I, I feel like you should be able to return it. At that, See, I don't know. People are getting mad. Okay, maybe we should tell people. You can return books on Amazon. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the author is they find out in their queue how many books are returned. But I think that people believe that you can just return, 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 return. No, Amazon will lock an account. Yeah. If they if you, return, 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 mm -hmm. return. If you I've abuse actually, it. One time I had to call because I have. And people legitimately misclick books. Because it's so easy to do myself. one click. Mm -hmm. I've accidentally misclicked books or clicked a book because it was the title. And then I realized, no, same title, different author mm -hmm. and go back. And of course, yeah, I'm probably going to return it if yeah. I didn't read it. And there's some books that I have started. It's few and five routine. I probably turned maybe four books, five books mm -hmm. in a year. Mm -hmm. But if I start a book and I get in one, two chapter and I'm like, okay, this, this isn't going to work for me. Yeah. Okay. If it's a 99 cent book, I'm probably not going to return it. Mm -hmm. But if it is a big $4.99 book and I open it, I read mm -hmm. one, two, three chapters and I'm like, yeah, that's that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to read this. This is terrible. I'm going to hate it. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I be able to return it? I'm not going to read it. I mean, that's the how, that's exactly the way I feel about it. I mean, and, and you're right with the way to lock you out because I've done that with audiobooks because I'll return an audiobook in a minute because those fucking credits are expensive. I mean, they're like 20 bucks, you know, for a book. If you do a credit or whatever, or whatever the breakdown is, if you buy them like in three, I think they're like 15 to $12 each, whatever. But I'll get an audiobook because I'm like, oh, that sounds good. And I'll listen to the first chapter and I'm like, this narrator grates my nerves. And I know yeah. I won't read the book. But nine out of 10 times, I have already bought the audiobook or bought the ebook along with the audiobook. So I don't return both of them because I'm like, oh, the audio didn't work. I'll read the ebook. So I'll return the audio. Because a lot and, of times, if you buy the ebook, guys, you mm -hmm. can get the audiobook for cheaper. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, let me just do this. I'll pay, you know, 10 bucks outright. It's and actually just not use yeah, the credit. cheaper to buy both the ebook than the audio than to just buy the audio. Just to buy the audio. Yeah. So, but I've done it to where I'm like, oh, let me go back. Because it is a pain in the ass to do it on audio. You have to do it on your desktop. Mm -hmm. You have to go back through your things. You have to search through your audios and returns. So I've done it where I'm like, okay, I didn't listen to that one, that one, or that one. And I'm like, I'll just return these three at one time. And it's I, like, it'll kick you out. It's like, no, you can't do it. I will say probably in my whole life, probably three or four times I've rage returned a book at the end. <laughs> I can see it. Like I'm raised, like yeah. I'm mad. Mm -hmm. I'm mad, mad, mad. Like you, I cannot believe you just did that. Mm -hmm. F you. Can't believe you. I'm like, no, I want to be paid. You wasted five hours of my time. <laughs> You know, here's the thing, like, here's my whole stance on it. And I understand why people don't want to do it because they're like, it takes money away from the authors. It takes money out of authors' pockets. Here's my whole stance on it. I don't think I should be told how to spend my money. And I'm not going to tell somebody else how to do it. And if you read my entire book and you return it, that's, na that's the nature of the beast. That's like book pirating. The person that reads your book and returns your book was not going to buy it anyways. Yeah. The person who pirates your book was not going to, was not going to pay for your book to begin with. Nope. These are the same kind of people. Nope. You know, you're, you're telling, you know, a lot of people on TikTok I saw, they're telling a, a crowd, they're like, you can't do this. And I'm like, well, the people that are doing it aren't listening to you. Yeah. You know, and now and you're just shaming the people that, cause come on. 
Yeah, you're, you're shaming your the people who do it can. very few. Can you imagine so. somebody who only gets $20 a month? That's like their allowance to themselves yes. to read books. Mm-hmm. And they accidentally download a book or they start a book and they're like, shit, this really mm-hmm. sucks. I'm not liking it. You know, you want to be like, well, that sucks. You got to keep it. Yeah. You're Sorry. out. I guess you're not going to finish it and you're stuck with it. Mm-hmm. I just feel you got to always remember that customers too are having their own experience not only are they spending their money mm-hmm. they're spending their free time yeah which is valuable to them too Absolutely. and they should get to enjoy yeah. that free time and if they're not going to enjoy yeah. your stuff they should probably get to send it back now it's I not just, one thing yeah you can't read the whole book and be like oh it was just okay that's kind of again that's, that's the people who are the assholes that aren't gonna that if they're doing it like that they're not going to buy your book but anyways. Amazon's they're trying to not letting people yeah. return 20 books. I can promise no. you that the cl- the account is flagged and mm-hmm. shut down. They get in trouble. Mm-hmm. But so. I see like where some authors, like someone posted up and they were like, okay, I had 44 returns this month. And this was the total on the returns for people that read it. And it is, if you look at it like that, like if you look at, okay, this was the total that was returning. This is how much money I lost on it. It sucks. Like it as an author, that fucking sucks not getting paid for that. But at the same time, I mean, this is the shit that you take on when it's, you have a business. Every business has a loss. Yeah. The price of business. I mean, like look at something like Bath and Body Works. I worked there and like, you know, LB who sings the theme song. She worked there for like a decade and I worked there too, like during seasonal help and stuff or during the season, uh, like holiday seasons. But someone would bring in an empty bottle of body wash and they could return it. That was the return policy. You can literally burn the candle to the bottom and bring me the empty glass in the Bath and Body Works and they will take it. What do you what do you what do you say when you return it? Nothing. <laughs> you don't say anything. You just say, "All right, here you go. Give them their money back." So it's like, and people do this. People will scan the sy- scan yes, the system. So pe- there will always it's, be people that there scan will always the be people that scan it. But Any you know, system out there, but we can't punish the people that are out there generally buying books, yeah. reading for pleasure, yeah, kind of thing. And it seems like that's who that like that's what was happening. Everybody was shouting about this. And I was like, I didn't see anybody from this com- this side of the conversation. And I just thought, like, I, I don't think we should generalize people that return books because and there are so many different cases. They won't let you return it, like, if you bought it. After a certain time. Ago, yeah. After mm-hmm. a certain time. So, I mean, maybe people didn't like the book when they started it. If you're saying this month I had a, on this book, I had a higher average of returns and maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't I know. know it's a hard thing to face too, as an author to, to like, to face that and say, well, maybe it just like, okay, well, all these people loved it. So, so this has to be like, people are just assholes. And it was like, it just, maybe it didn't work for everybody, you know? But um, so I have a friend that works at Lowe's, like the home improvement store. And she said she was their customer service manager. And she said, we don't stop theft in the store. And I was like, what? She said, you could come in and literally wheel a grill out of the lobby and into your car. And I couldn't stop you. And I was like, are you? She said, I have helped someone load up a grill to steal before. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And she was like, our policy is just let them have it. I was like, I'm going to go raid your store. And she was like, you good. <laughs> They're not going to prosecute you. I was like, how is this a thing? And she said, it's just the policy. They know there's going to be like a, a certain amount of loss that's included in this. Yeah. I mean, actually, can you write that off? I don't in know. Some I way. Wonder, like, yeah. You have I mean, the evidence that it was returned for a loss or whatever. Maybe you can turn that over to your accountant. I think that's probably a great a suggestion to say that. Like, you if actually you're an have author. the proof. Amazon literally docked mm-hmm. it and showed you. So it's not like you're making up a number. Yeah. You can literally show it. Yeah. I think that's a great suggestion because, you know, when you file your taxes on your business, you, have, you can file that in at a loss, you know, like whatever your losses and gains were that year. I wonder if it's on, actually, I wonder if it's on the tax thing that they do, you know, when they send you your, what is it, 1099 or whatever. I wonder if it has gains and losses on it. That'd be interesting to know. But anyways, I just thought that that, because I, again, I kind of, we've sort of had this conversation before a long time ago. And 
I was like, I never, I didn't hear anyone else having this side of the conversation, like I said. So I wonder if part of it's because we've been in the business, because I see people like get really, and it's not okay to pirate. Yeah. It's not yeah. okay to plagiarize, mm-hmm. both totally wrong. But when it happens to us, we don't get mad. Like, I'm just like, it is. What are you going to do? What like, are you going to do? You can't do? stop it. You can, no. report, you can report it. You can do whatever, but it is what it is. People have been stealing music. They've been stealing yeah. movies. They've been sharing yeah. accounts. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I mean, people, that- but people who are stealing weren't going to pay for it anyways. Yep. You were never going to get the purchase. Yeah. They're not going to come in and be like, oh, you know what? Now, and you know what? I wonder sometimes too, if it doesn't, where if somebody goes on a pirate site and they read it and they're like, oh, I want all of their stuff. If it doesn't help like with sales in the long run, I don't know. I've actually but, had an author say that to me before. When I remember when I first started off, and I was like, oh, this is so messed up. And she's like, you know, you should kind of be happy somebody read it. And I was like, you know what? To a little degree, <laughs> even though it kind of sucks, small degree, like, yeah. somebody wanted it enough that they mm-hmm. stole it. <laughs> well, you know, and I saw a, a bigger author the other day. She had like this huge release that she had been planning for a whole year and da da da. And um, she said the day it went out, she was like, it's already on a pirated site the day it went out. And I was like, obviously, people were looking forward to it. Somebody's going to take it and pirate and try to make money off of it or do whatever they want to do to put it out there. But again, like most of these companies or these websites that pirate books, they're outside the United States. Yeah. Like you can't do anything about it. Like there's not an internet police that can go shut it down. Like you can, you can file a complaint. I'm probably going to get so much shit for this. I probably shouldn't say this. But does it make you feel that horrible if maybe there is a girl in a third world country who is download because I know in some countries they can't even download these books, period. Like it's against yep. the law. I've had to mm-hmm. send, I had a reader for a long time that I just sent her the files. I didn't charge her nothing because she just couldn't have them. Yeah. But yeah. some of these people get on these sites, these girls, mm-hmm. just so they can read these books. Yeah. It's the only I way know. they can get them. I know. I think it. And if you told me that, I'd be like, take the book. <laughs> no, it's fine. Just leave it up. <laughs> But, you know, there's there's just so many ways, like you said, for somebody to scam the system, for somebody to take advantage of it, that it's going to happen at some point. Again, you have to a lot for a certain amount of loss. I get that that is really upsetting that you've worked hard on your book, that you've published it. But even, you know, with however many books that we've published, I, I'm sure every single one of them is on a pirated site somewhere. Oh, they are. Even, they are. Our, even our publisher books are oh, probably on a Worse than that, people take them. And put them up on other websites for sale. Yeah, that's true. They do. <laughs> for sale. It happens all the time. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I, I get, I can, I see both sides of this. I see as an author why this would be really, really upsetting. And like you said, maybe we've just done it for so long that we're sort of desensitized to it because it happens so often to us. But I can I see just, if you only sold a hundred bucks and somebody told you 20 yes. was stolen. That would yeah. be very heartbreaking. Yeah, it would be. It would. Yeah. And I think maybe it's because we have so many that it's just like, they're all well, pirated. I don't but look. Do what? I don't look. No, no, I no. Don't look. I don't go searching for it. People will tell us. Sometimes people send us a link and be like, oh, your book's on even Wattpad. And Wattpad's pretty good. You can report it on there. I never the returns on Amazon and stuff in there. I never, no. I'm not looking. I don't need to know that number. You know why? Because that does nothing for me. Yeah, nothing. all it's going to do Knowing is fuck that with your head. number yeah. changes nothing. Yeah, so 100%. just I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's probably for the best <laughs> to just stay out of it. Um, so the other thing I have on here to talk about is um, there are a whole discussion about women earlier, but um, I was with some friends and the other night, and we were talking about something and. Someone, I, I don't want to give too much away, but someone said something to the effect of like, oh, like I don't like her hair or something to that effect. And um, I was just like, how, how long can you go without talking about a woman and not describing the way she looks? Oh. And that's like it, the thought occurred to me. As I was having, because I was having this thought over and over and over because my kids were there. And I was like, I said, I don't want them to hear this, you know, that we're like talking about a woman in the way she looks. And I just thought like, is how often does that happen where we have a conversation about someone, even if it's a compliment, 
that the way she looks is brought into the discussion because that's a good fucking point. Now I'm going to notice that. I know. I know. So I thought about it. And then as soon as I had the thought, I kept saying, I kept hearing it over and over and, and in a different scenario. Once I got a, once I went somewhere else and I went out to dinner with friends last night and I experienced it again. And it was like, but that's, okay. that's awesome. You know why? Cause you're now unprogramming that from you doing it. Which yeah. we've been programmed to do these things. We mimic yeah. what our parents did. We mimic what our older mm -hmm. siblings did. And now you see that it's doing it. It's not right. And your brain is now catching it. And you're starting to unprogram yourself from doing it. Which yeah. is almost like growing up in a cult. You know, they say when you come yes. out of a cult, you have to be, mm -hmm. they, they say you have to go through a deprogramming. I 100% mm -hmm. believe growing up, I went through a programming. There's a reason I'm attracted to a certain type of people. There's a reason we always think blondes with blue eyes and stuff yeah. are pretty. It's yeah. been programmed into us. It's been absolutely into mm -hmm. us. And we need to deprogram that. And that sounds like what you're doing. And now I'm going to start doing that. I know. Because I never thought about it until you mm -hmm. said it. I was like, you know what? You're probably fucking right. Yeah. Like if think about in a conversation when you're talking about a woman, think about how often when you talk about this person that you describe her physical appearance. And that's yeah. like that's what was really sort of jarring to me because it wasn't always positive when I heard other women discuss this. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm thinking in my head like, oh, OK, probably shouldn't say that. And I'm like, well, what even if it's positive, why are we discussing the way she looks like? She's a person, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I don't know. It was just a very interesting concept. And so I wrote it down and I was like, I'm going to say something. So if you're listening and you notice this the next time you're you're speaking and you're trying to talk about something, think about it before you say it. So what about the fact that when I'm out, I always try, if I am like engaging with another woman, mm -hmm. I always try to give a compliment. Sure. Is that yeah. weird? Is that bad? No, I don't think it's weird, but try to compliment something besides the physical appearance. No, oh, yeah. I guess because I'll be like, oh, I really like your shirt or your glasses are cute or yeah. this or that. But that's all you can really go off if you're just like two seconds next to them. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't even know what they say or do or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I can see that maybe like complimenting like clothes or something like that, like an object in that sense, instead of like a physical appearance, like, oh, you have really pretty hair or like you have really nice yeah. skin or something. I don't know. Maybe that's different. That that feels different versus like, oh, I like your shirt, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like I would much rather someone when they're talking about me to describe who I am versus what I look like. That's what I think. So. I think that the only thing I'd ever say about you is that you have a lot of hair. <laughs> She's a lot of she got big, big hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, again, like, I think it would just be, I, I think it's some, it's eye opening because I have, since then I've tried to have a discussion about women and I have really watched myself when doing it. So. I challenge you if you can do it next time, see how long you can go without doing it okay. before you catch yourself doing it. So, all right, let's talk about essay Clayton and tempting you. Um, we have got, I'll read her author bio and then we'll talk about the book. S.A. Clayton lives in a small town outside of Toronto, Canada with her, Toronto, Canada with her husband and her scary large collection of books that seem to take over every room. I love that. She has worked on both sides of the publishing industry, both in a bookstore and for actual publishing companies. Although she loved both for different reasons, she found that writing was her true passion and has spent the last few years breaking into the industry as best she can. She is a lover of all things romance and began her writing journey in her late 20s. Since then, she has immersed herself in the romance genre and couldn't be happier. When she's not writing or reading, She's enjoying binging a great Netflix show, Stranger Things, anyone? Baking, because who doesn't love cookies? And spending time with her family. So the book you're, you're going to listen to today, the first half, is called Tempting You. And I'll read you the book by all now. Sometimes you need to be tempted. I knew getting involved with someone right after a breakup was a bad idea. Yet Ian did something to me the second our eyes met across the bar. When those piercing eyes met mine, when his hands gripped my body in a way I'd never experienced before, I fell for him hard. He knew my body better than anyone ever has, showed me the things I never experienced before, and made me crave more, so much more. But what happens when reality comes crashing down and we both have to face the fact that real life isn't a fantasy? 
Will we be able to leave behind our past or will the temptation of the future be enough? (laughs) So tempting you that you're about to listen to leads straight into a book called Tempting Fate. It follows the best friends of the main characters in this book. It's a brother's best friend's second chance romance. And it takes place at the same sex club that's featured in this book, the one you're about to listen to. It's live now. If you want to go grab it, if you want, if you like the first half of this and you want more of it, you can grab Tenting Fate. Um, she has a new series called Harbor Cove. It follows five male best friends from a small town that all find love. The first book, Hoping for Her, came out at the end of March. And the second book, Falling for Her, comes out April 18th. Um, and the giveaway this week is a $25 Amazon gift card. So make sure you go get it. All right, all those links will be in the descriptions. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess listen to the first half. All right, we'll see you guys on the other side. This is Tempting You by S.A. Clayton. Read for you by Allie Piper. Chapter One Hallie The second I walk through the front door of Hardy's, the swanky downtown bar, my heart sinks and I take a breath. I need to know the truth. I need to know if those text messages were real. And if they were, I need to see them with my own eyes. My eyes scan the room, trying to see if Brad is here. And when I don't see his telltale blonde head anywhere in sight, I breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe tonight won't be as bad as I think. I take a tentative step toward the bar, and the first thing I notice is the bartender tall and slim with a five o'clock shadow that accentuates his jaw. The closer I get, the more intrigued I become. His black hair is splattered with dark blue dye, a contrast that highlights his bright blue eyes. And when they connect with mine, I can't help the way my heart stutters. What can I get you? He asks, his voice low, sending a sensation coursing through my body that I haven't felt in months. My eyes take in everything about this man. The black t-shirt monogrammed with the bar's name on his chest. The silver chain around his neck and the spacers in his ears. All of these things make me question why he's working in a place like Hardy's. The clientele here are primarily businessmen who come in wearing suits and ties, drink brandy neat and pay with a black card. But the longer my eyes scan this man from head to toe, the more intrigued I become. Miss, he questions, snapping my eyes to his as he graces me with a smile and tells me just how obvious I was in checking him out. Do you want a drink? He asks once more, this time leaning on the bar as I take a seat at one of the empty bar stools. Sorry, I mutter, my cheeks flaming red. My fair skin hides nothing as he winks and stands back to his full height. That's when the front door opens and my eyes connect with the couple entering the bar. The second I see that blonde hair come into view, every fear, every horrible thought I've had over the past few hours comes rushing to the surface. There, in front of my eyes, is my boyfriend of three years with his arm around his secretary, who looks stunning in her tight pencil skirt, white blouse, and pen straight blonde hair tied up in a high ponytail. For a split second, I wonder if my eyes are deceiving me, Maybe he's just having a meeting with her after work? Then he smiles the smile that used to be reserved for me and leans down, kissing her on the lips as if it's the most natural thing in the world. Shit, I whisper as the tears begin, my hand shaking as I take out my phone and read over the messages I received not even three hours ago. Unknown. Your boyfriend isn't who you think he is. He's been seeing his secretary for months. Unknown. Go to Hardy's at six tonight, and he will be there with her. Unknown. I'm sorry. Are you okay? The bartender asks, those crystal blue eyes full of concern. I shake my head, letting the tears fall because who the fuck cares at this point? I can't tell if the tears are from sadness or anger, and it doesn't matter right now. All I want to do is go over there and bitch slap him so hard his mother feels how much of a douche canoe her son is. Isn't that your boyfriend? His voice is quiet, reserved. And when my eyes meet his, I see pity staring back at me. 
ex-boyfriend now. I met her, feeling the anger start to bubble up inside me. Brad promised me forever. Even though deep down I knew he wasn't what I wanted. I wanted spice. I wanted lust, and I definitely wanted more than one orgasm every few weeks. But I stayed, because he's what I thought I needed. Already in my late 20s, I wanted to get married, and everyone always said we made the perfect couple. I believed them. Did you know he would be here? He questions. A brow lifted, and a concerned look plays behind those eyes that have quickly become my favorite part of this man. I nod, taking out my phone and showing him the text messages. Wow. Well, I guess it's better to know now than waste more time. You could say that, I say wiping away the stray tears that have fallen and are now staining my cheeks. I just can't tell if I'm more angry or sad at this point. I mean, we've been together three years, and I thought it was going somewhere even though our sex life left a lot to be desired. My eyes widen, and I slap my hand over my mouth because I can't believe I just said that. Well, then he doesn't deserve you. God, this is so embarrassing. I shake my head and place my face in the palm of my hands, wanting the floor to open up and swallow me whole. Any man who can't satisfy his woman shouldn't have her in the first place. God, it just keeps getting worse. I can't believe I just told you that. You're a total stranger. He smiles, holding out his hand as if waiting for me to shake it. I tilt my head in question, and when he nods for me to take his hand, I smile, doing as he says. Hi. My name is Ian Walker. I own this bar and hate potato chips. His eyes are smiling, and I can't help but do the same. You hate potato chips. How is that even possible? I chuckle, loving how he completely took me away from the moment with a single touch. Yes, he states matter-of-factly, as though he's not the most interesting person because of this fact. And now you. He nods to me, waiting. I'm Hallie Parker. I love potato chips and hate Skittles. See, you don't need to be embarrassed because we're not strangers anymore. God, this man is healing the crater in my chest with every sweet thing that comes out of his mouth. Touche, Mr. Walker. He smiles, pulling out the rag tucked into his back pocket and wiping down the already clean bar in front of us. Are you going to go over there and confront him? The bartender asks, as my eyes dart over to where Brad is sitting. The woman seductively plays with his tie, leaning in and kissing his neck, causing me to gag subtly. I want to. I need to, I admit, taking a deep breath and trying to figure out what I'm going to say, but my mind comes up blank. I wish my best friend Jade was here because she would know exactly what to say and how to say it. Before I can dwell on any of it, a shot glass appears in front of me. My eyes lift only to meet the glimmering ones of Ian, who just smiles and pushes the glass toward me. If you're going to go over there, I think you need this. I blush, knowing he's right. And just so you know, he's an idiot. How do you know that? You don't even know me. Well, for one, I know your name is Hallie, and you love potato chips. Something I won't hold against you, by the way. I can't help the laughter that bubbles up in my chest. But in this case, I don't need to know you to know he's an idiot. God, those eyes bore into mine. And that weight on my chest lifts just a little bit, making me wonder if meeting him tonight was fate. Taking one last look at the shot glass, I down it in one go, even though I have no idea what's in it, and cough as the vodka hits my throat. I'm grateful when Ian then places a glass of Coke in front of me, and I take a sip. God, it's been a long time since Vodka and I have seen each other. Ian chuckles low in his throat as he takes the shot glass off the bar and places it in the sink behind him. Well, here goes nothing, I mutter. Spinning in my chair, I take a deep breath, knowing that after this moment, my life will never be the same. Chapter Two Ian Hallie walked into my bar not even 20 minutes ago, and already I can feel the itch in my fingers to touch her, claim her, 
and be the man her boyfriend obviously isn't. I watch as she walks toward the poor bastard, her head held high, shoulders back, and I can't help but wish I knew what she was about to say. I want to be the one to tell him what an idiot he is, how colossal his mistake is because stepping out on a woman like Hallie, that's not conceivable to a man like myself. I knew she was my type the second she walked through the door. Her bright red hair is anything but natural, yet it suits her all the same. I didn't know I could find her sleeve of tattoos any more attractive. But pairing that with the nose ring and her extremely unexpected shy demeanor, and I was hooked. I take my eyes off Hallie to serve a few of my regulars and restock some of the beers under the bar. When I come back behind the bar, I expect to see Hallie's arms flailing and hear her voice carrying across the room. But instead her shoulders are slumped, and her head is dipped toward her chin. Fuck. I eye Hank, my other bartender, and he gives me a knowing smile, nodding for me to go save her. So I hop over the bar, dismissing the bolting eyes of some of the patrons, and make my way toward Hallie. Hallie, go home and we'll talk, Hank demands. Her shoulders lift as if she's taking a deep breath. And before she can let it out, I reach out and take her hand, pulling her against me, my lips close to her ear. I got you. Give him hell. Her body sinks back against my chest, entwining our fingers and squeezing as her eyes meet mine. I nod, letting her know she can do this. And that's when my eyes lift to meet the idiot who decided he was better than the woman in front of me. Who the fuck are you? Douchebag mutters. The disgust evident as he takes in my appearance. From the blue hair, spacers in my ears, and the tattoos that cover almost every inch of my torso and arms. I know I don't fit the mold his tight believes should be allowed within the front doors, but he's in for a shock. I'm the owner of this bar, and I think it's time for you to leave. He rolls his eyes as they flick back and forth between Hallie and me. You hypocrite. You're over here yelling at me for getting some on the side when you're doing the same fucking thing. He yells. Hallie flinches as my arm wraps around her middle, pulling her closer. I never cheated on you, Hallie whispers her eyes cast down, and I know as much as she wishes to yell and scream at this guy, that's not her style. So I decide to do it for her. Okay, that's it. You and the girl need to leave. My voice carries, and all of a sudden a hush settles over the bar, and all eyes are on us. Hallie begins shaking in my arms, and I know I need to get her out of this situation before it gets any worse. So I gently pull her behind me as I lean down on the table between us and level our gazes. I'm going to say this one more time before I call the cops, okay? I need you and the lady to leave my bar now. He huffs, taking the woman's hand as they stand and walk away. Just when I think the drama is over, he turns when he reaches the front door and catches Hallie's eyes. Call me later, Hal. We'll talk and sort all this out. He smirks. The fucker smirks thinking that everything will be okay while he's standing in front of her with another girl in his arms. You know, Hallie says from behind me, finally stepping out, her shoulders back and eyes angry. A few months ago, I might have done just that. A few months ago, I might have tried to make it work. But you know what? I'm done. I'm done getting shot down by you. I'm done feeling like what I want doesn't matter. And I'm sick and tired of feeling less than because your ego can't take it. Fuck yeah. My hands settle on her shoulders, lightly squeezing and loving the smile she gives when her eyes meet mine. I'm so proud of her at this moment. And that would be your cue to leave, I say, pointing at the door. I wait until they're out of sight, before spinning Hallie on her heels and wrapping my arms around her, pulling her close. God, that was awesome. I mutter into her hair, taking a deep breath and shuddering at the strawberry scent that hits me. Thank you for that. I was prepared to yell and scream, but when I got over there, that woman was looking at me with so much pity in her gaze. I just couldn't do it. I nod, taking her hand in mine, trying to ignore the spark that travels through me. Well, you did it. And I think that deserves a drink on the house. And she smiles a genuine smile for the first time tonight and I wink, settling her on a stool and making my way around the bar once more. 
What can I get you? Her eyes sparkle as her head tilts, her eyes locking with mine. Yup, it's going to be hard to get this woman out of my head for the foreseeable future. An old fashioned, please. Fuck, but I love when women order something that doesn't come either slushed or with an umbrella or a cherry. A woman after my own heart, I whisper, placing a napkin down on the bar. Now the question is, do you want it with bourbon or whiskey? I ask, hoping she gets the joke, and when her eyes sparkle, I know the earlier scene has drifted into the recesses of her mind. Well, considering bourbon is a type of whiskey, it seems that question is null and void, she teases. And I swear I fall for her head first at this moment. She's perfect. Well done, I whisper, loving the way her eyes dilate at the praise. I file that piece of information in the back of my mind as I take a minute to make her drink. I place it in front of her, watching as she takes a sip. Hallie approved? I ask, needing to hear her praise. Yes, very well done, she mutters before taking another sip. Before long, that drink is gone, and I'm working on making her another. Can I ask you something? She nods, her eyes meeting mine as I take a deep breath, not knowing if she'll find this out of line. Why were you with a guy like that? I nod to the door so we both know who I'm talking about. He obviously didn't deserve you. She smiles, shaking her head. He wasn't always so... She trails off, trying to find an appropriate word. Do she? She laughs, nodding. Yes, that. But these past few months, I've been pushing to do some things he wasn't interested in pursuing. I tilt my head in confusion. Is that a roundabout way of saying you're into some kinky shit and he wasn't? She blushes scarlet, and I have to take a breath to settle my cock down, because that color on her fair skin is causing him to go into hyperdrive. Maybe, she whispers. Downing the rest of her drink in one go, she gets up off her stool and picks up her purse. I think that's my cue to go before I embarrass myself anymore for one night. A sense of panic settles in the pit of my stomach. And before I can think better of it, my mouth opens and words spill out. Can I take you home? Her brow lifts. And when I hear the words repeated back in my brain, I cringe, knowing how they sound. What I mean is, can I drive you home? I want to make sure you make it home safe. From the way her eyes narrow and the uncertainty spills from her gaze, I don't expect to see this woman again after tonight. But to my surprise, she nods, blushing once more before smiling. And in that moment, I know everything is about to change. Chapter Two Ian Hallie walked into my bar not even 20 minutes ago, and already I can feel the itch in my fingers to touch her, claim her, and be the man her boyfriend obviously isn't. I watch as she walks toward the poor bastard, her head held high, shoulders back, and I can't help but wish I knew what she was about to say. I want to be the one to tell him what an idiot he is, how colossal his mistake is because stepping out on a woman like Hallie, that's not conceivable to a man like myself. I knew she was my type the second she walked through the door. Her bright red hair is anything but natural, yet it suits her all the same. I didn't know I could find her sleeve of tattoos any more attractive. But pairing that with the nose ring and her extremely unexpected shy demeanor, and I was hooked. I take my eyes off Hallie to serve a few of my regulars and restock some of the beers under the bar. When I come back behind the bar, I expect to see Hallie's arms flailing and hear her voice carrying across the room. But instead, her shoulders are slumped, and her head is dipped toward her chin. Fuck. I eye Hank, my other bartender, and he gives me a knowing smile, nodding for me to go save her. So I hop over the bar, dismissing the bolting eyes of some of the patrons, and make my way toward Hallie. Hallie, go home and we'll talk, Hank demands. Her shoulders lift as if she's taking a deep breath, and before she can let it out, I reach out and take her hand, pulling her against me, my lips close to her ear. I got you. Give him hell. Her body sinks back against my chest, entwining our fingers and squeezing as her eyes meet mine. 
I nod, letting her know she can do this. And that's when my eyes lift to meet the idiot who decided he was better than the woman in front of me. Who the fuck are you? Douchebag mutters. The disgust evident as he takes in my appearance. From the blue hair, spacers in my ears, and the tattoos that cover almost every inch of my torso and arms. I know I don't fit the mold his tight beliefs should be allowed within the front doors. But he's in for a shock. I'm the owner of this bar, and I think it's time for you to leave. He rolls his eyes as they flick back and forth between Hallie and me. You hypocrite. You're over here yelling at me for getting some on the side when you're doing the same fucking thing. He yells. Hallie flinches as my arm wraps around her middle, pulling her closer. I never cheated on you, Hallie whispers, her eyes cast down. And I know as much as she wishes to yell and scream at this guy, that's not her style. So I decide to do it for her. Okay, that's it. You and the girl need to leave. My voice carries, and all of a sudden a hush settles over the bar, and all eyes are on us. Hallie begins shaking in my arms, and I know I need to get her out of this situation before it gets any worse. So I gently pull her behind me as I lean down on the table between us and level our gazes. I'm going to say this one more time before I call the cops, okay? I need you and the lady to leave my bar now. He huffs taking the woman's hand as they stand and walk away. Just when I think the drama is over, he turns when he reaches the front door and catches Hallie's eyes. Call me later, Hal. We'll talk and sort all this out. He smirks. The fucker smirks, thinking that everything will be okay while he's standing in front of her with another girl in his arms. You know, Hallie says from behind me, finally stepping out, her shoulders back and eyes angry. A few months ago, I might have done just that. A few months ago, I might have tried to make it work. But you know what? I'm done. I'm done getting shot down by you. I'm done feeling like what I want doesn't matter. And I'm sick and tired of feeling less than because your ego can't take it. Fuck yeah. My hands settle on her shoulders, lightly squeezing and loving the smile she gives when her eyes meet mine. I'm so proud of her at this moment. That would be your cue to leave, I say, pointing at the door. I wait until they're out of sight, before spinning Hallie on her heels and wrapping my arms around her, pulling her close. God, that was awesome, I mutter into her hair, taking a deep breath and shuddering at the strawberry scent that hits me. Thank you for that. I was prepared to yell and scream, but when I got over there, that woman was looking at me with so much pity in her gaze. I just couldn't do it. I nod, taking her hand in mine, trying to ignore the spark that travels through me. Well, you did it, and I think that deserves a drink on the house. She smiles a genuine smile for the first time tonight, and I wink, settling her on a stool and making my way around the bar once more. What can I get you? Her eyes sparkle as her head tilts, her eyes locking with mine. Yup. It's going to be hard to get this woman out of my head for the foreseeable future. An old fashioned, please. Fuck. But I love when women order something that doesn't come either slushed or with an umbrella or a cherry. A woman after my own heart, I whisper, placing a napkin down on the bar. Now the question is, do you want it with bourbon or whiskey? I ask, hoping she gets the joke, and when her eyes sparkle, I know the earlier scene has drifted into the recesses of her mind. Well, considering bourbon is a type of whiskey, it seems that question is null and void, she teases. And I swear I fall for her head first at this moment. She's perfect. Well done, I whisper, loving the way her eyes dilate at the praise. I file that piece of information in the back of my mind as I take a minute to make her drink. I place it in front of her, watching as she takes a sip. Hallie approved, I ask needing to hear her praise. Yes, very well done, she mutters before taking another sip. Before long, that drink is gone, and I'm working on making her another. Can I ask you something? She nods, her eyes meeting mine as I take a deep breath, not knowing if she'll find this out of line. Why were you with a guy like that? I nod to the door so we both know who I'm talking about. He obviously didn't deserve you. She smiles, shaking her head. 
He wasn't always so... She trails off, trying to find an appropriate word. Do she? She laughs, nodding. Yes, that. But these past few months, I've been pushing to do some things he wasn't interested in pursuing. I tilt my head in confusion. Is that a roundabout way of saying you're into some kinky shit and he wasn't? She blushes scarlet, and I have to take a breath to settle my cock down, because that color on her fair skin is causing him to go into hyperdrive. Maybe, she whispers. Downing the rest of her drink in one go, she gets up off her stool and picks up her purse. I think that's my cue to go before I embarrass myself anymore for one night. A sense of panic settles in the pit of my stomach. And before I can think better of it, my mouth opens and words spill out. Can I take you home? Her brow lifts. And when I hear the words repeated back in my brain, I cringe, knowing how they sound. What I mean is, can I drive you home? I want to make sure you make it home safe. From the way her eyes narrow and the uncertainty spills from her gaze, I don't expect to see this woman again after tonight. But to my surprise, she nods, blushing once more before smiling. And in that moment, I know everything is about to change. Chapter Three Hallie You can cut the sexual tension with a knife as Ian drives me home. The cab of his truck is thick with all the emotions swirling around us. And for once in my life, I want to be the one to do something spontaneous. I want to take what I want when I want it. But that small voice in the back of my brain fills my head. And I remember that I'm an adult, someone with a full-time job, responsibilities, and a life to think about. That doesn't stop me from dreaming about what Ian's lips would feel like devouring mine. Or what those tattooed hands would feel like gliding up under my shirt. Are you okay over there? I nod, pointing at my building. You're quiet. I smile, knowing he's right, but not having any words. When Ian pulls over, I don't wait for him to shut off the engine. I bolt out of the truck, knowing that if I stay a second longer, I would admit how much I want to kiss him. And that would lead to a discussion I don't know if I'm ready for. Hallie, Ian yells, jogging around the front of his truck and grasping my wrist lightly, stopping me in my tracks. What's wrong? When I turn to lie and say it's nothing, I see the concern painting over those gorgeous eyes, and my shoulders sag. I don't want to say, I admit. Hoping that's enough because the thought of admitting anything else causes hives to break out over my chest. I expect him to let go, walk away and never see me again. But he doesn't. Instead, he laces my fingers with his and pulls me flush against his chest. You know what I think? He whispers his lips grazing the shell of my ear and causing goosebumps to spread across every inch of my body. I shake my head, my eyes falling closed as the lips I've spent the past few hours fantasizing about kiss their way down my neck. I think that you've been thinking about kissing me for the past few hours, just like I've been thinking the same damn thing. My intake of breath shudders through my chest as I try to control my limbs. And as much as I want to take you upstairs and show you just how much you've been tempting me, I know you've just broken up with your boyfriend, and I'm not that guy. My eyes snap open, locking with his. What? Breathless, I try to come up with something more to say because I know he means to be the good guy here. But the more he says, the more I want to jump him right here. Hallie, you walked into my bar as if I drew you myself. You are everything I want. Yet tonight is not the night to do this. I can tell by the fear in your eyes that you're not ready for what I want, and that's okay. I'll bide my time. He winks and kisses me on the cheek before walking away, back toward his truck. It's then that the sense of panic sets in. The thought of never seeing him again settles under my skin and festers, and I know I can't let him walk away. I've been locked in a relationship that left so much to be desired. And right now, I want to be the girl I always wanted to grow up to be. So I take one more deep breath before running after Ian, mirroring his move and grasping his wrist right before he reaches his truck. He spins, pushing me up against the side of his truck. 
and before I have time to explain what I was doing, his mouth is on mine. I thought I knew what kissing was. I thought I knew what passion felt like once it wrapped itself around you. But this kiss from Ian blew everything I thought I knew out of the water and left me breathless. Thank God, he mutters against my lips before taking them once more, his fingers digging into my hips as he pulls me flush to his chest. You have no idea how much I fought myself to keep from taking you in my truck on the way here. How much I wanted to taste these lips while you were sitting in front of me looking like you came right out of every fantasy I've ever had. I groan, my arm circling his neck as my leg lifts and hooks around his hip. His hand immediately grabs my thigh, lining his hard cock up to grind perfectly against my heat. Come upstairs with me, I say breathlessly, almost like a prayer. And when I met with silence, I opened my eyes only to be met with hesitancy. I don't think that's a good idea he warns, placing a soft kiss on my lips. I try to take it further, but he lets go of my leg before taking a step back. Don't get the wrong idea here, babe. I want you so bad that my dick is literally screaming at me right now. But can you honestly say you're ready for all of that tonight? My hesitancy is enough for both of us. My shoulders sag in defeat. I'm sorry. Humiliation settles deep within my bones. And before I can wallow in it, Ian is there, wrapping his arms around my shoulders. Hallie, I like you. And I want to see where this goes, but I need you to be sure. God, it's like he was drawn just for me. What if I can't give you more than this? I question. Nerves plaguing my stomach as I search his eyes for a clue as to how he's feeling. What if I can't do the relationship thing? So you want to be friends with benefits? He teases. And I smile, lowering my head to his chest as my fingers grasp the sides of his shirt. To be fair, we aren't even really friends. He gasps, his hand resting over his heart as if I've just insulted him. But his full-on smile gives his true feelings away, and I laugh. He unlocks eyes with mine before lowering his lips in a sweet kiss that I know will linger for hours after he leaves. I can handle just the benefits, for now. He winks and makes his way to the driver's side of the truck. Come to the bar when you're sure this is what you want. I'll be there every night this week. I nod, watching as he drives away. Chapter Four Hallie Are you sure getting with someone right after a breakup is a good idea? It's been a few days since the night with Ian, and I haven't been able to get him out of my head. So naturally, I tell Jade, my best friend, that we need to do lunch because I need to talk it out. I know it seems fast. She gives me that no shit look, and I laugh. But he makes me feel things I have never felt before in my life. Jade, that kiss was... My eyes drift off, and I try to think of a way to describe it. Colossal. Yet even that word doesn't seem adequate. I still think it's too soon. I roll my eyes. Crude, I joke, seeing a flicker of something behind her eyes. But before I can question it, our server arrives to take our order. Hallie, you just broke it off with Brad after you've been with him for three years. Do you really think you're over him after just a few days? She has a valid point, one I've said to myself over and over again when I'm thinking about Ian. Does it make me a bitch to say I wasn't that sad when I found out he was cheating? Jade gives me a look of derision and I smile. Okay, fine, at first I was hurt, obviously. But once I thought about my relationship with him, I realized we were drifting apart and in the end, being away from him is the best thing since he can't keep himself to one woman. Jade eyes me curiously. So what, you were just with him for that long because the sex was good? She jokes but a look of caution replaces her smile, and I take a breath, readying myself for what I'm about to confess. The sex was awful, I admit, her eyes bulging as I take a sip of my drink. At first it was great. We were all over each other and couldn't go a few days without ending up in bed. But after about a year, I wanted more. She eyes me again, curious. 
What do you mean you wanted more? Like volume? I laugh, shaking my head. No, I wanted more intensity, more variety. And Brad refused to change. So our sex life tanked after that. I can see why you guys drifted apart, she says somberly. I nod, knowing that finding out he was a cheating bastard was the best thing to ever happen to me, even if I never met Ian. So, Jade inquires after the server leaves. Are you going to the bar? I've thought about this for the past few days, and the more time that passes, the more I want to see him. The more I try to push the thought of him out of my head, the more time he spends there. So I know I have to see where this goes. Yeah, I am. She shakes her head, taking a sip of her mimosa as if she knows how this is going to end. But for me, this is the start of something new and exciting. And I can't wait to see him tonight. The second the bar door shuts behind me and I lock eyes with Ian, I know I've made the right choice. He yells to his partner that he's taking a break. And before I can say a word, his fingers are laced with mine as he pulls me down a dark hallway and into a room that looks like an office. I open my mouth to ask what he's doing but I don't have the chance to utter a word. His mouth is on mine, and his hands find the edge of my skirt. Did I wear this outfit on purpose, hoping this would happen? Maybe? All I can say is that I'm glad I did, because the feel of his calloused fingers against my inner thigh is causing my brain to short circuit. God damn, I thought I embellished how good you tasted, but fuck, my memory didn't do you justice. I groan my hips circling, wanting more than what he's giving me. You have no idea how many hours I've spent watching that front door, he admits. And my heart stutters, liking that confession a little too much. Ian, I whisper, my fingers tugging at the hair on the back of his neck, wanting his lips. But he shakes his head as he ignores my pleas and kisses down my neck. Please. He shakes his head again as his eyes lift to mine. The hunger I see gazing back at me causes wetness to pool between my legs. And when I cross my legs, needing some kind of friction, he smirks. Nope, none of that, he murmurs, taking my knees and spreading them apart before taking both my wrists and one of his hands and lifting them above my head. My intake of breath takes us both off guard, and something unlocks inside my brain. You like that, don't you, baby? He whispers against the shell of my ear, nipping at the lobe as his fingers tighten on my wrists. I nod, because being restrained is something I've thought about but never tried. And fucking hell is this turning me on. Anne? My uncertainty is clear as his eyes soften and he kisses me lightly. You like the idea of being restrained? Was that something you wanted to try and couldn't? He doesn't say why, but we both know the answer before I nod. Fucking sexy as hell, he mutters before kissing me one more time. I want you to keep those hands right there for me, okay? No moving. I nod, his eyes darkening. Good girl. Shit, I moan, my hips circling because those two words cause an inferno to light within me. Interesting. We will definitely be coming back to that. But for now, I want to see how you taste. And before I can say a word, Ian sinks to his knees and pushes up my skirt. Within a second, his tongue dips through my dripping wet folds, and I'm lost. It doesn't take long before he has me on edge. But just when I'm about to fall over, my hand grasps his hair and he stops instantly. My eyes fall to his in a panic, my chest heaving as that smirk plays on the edge of his lips. I know exactly what he's about to say. I told you to keep those hands above your head. Only good girls who listen get rewarded. My head thumps against the wooden door behind me as I close my eyes and lift my hands once more, grasping the term around the door for support. That's a good girl. Keep them right there. I groan. My legs giving out as his tongue continues its ministrations, taking me over the edge in rapid succession. Before I know it, his fingers join the party plunging inside my wet heat. And soon I'm cresting over the hill once more, screaming his name. Welcome back. Hey, 
So make sure you check out all the show notes for all the good stuff. Enter this week's giveaway. And like I said, Tempting Fate is love. If you want more from what you just heard and go check out her new series, Harbor Cove. So I guess that's it. Um, What to do? (laughs) Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind. And read me romance. Read, read me romance.